Fish we've been looking for. Welcome to another episode of Ozfish. Davey, let's get some. Well, I'm out this afternoon and uh, I'm going to go for a Jewfish. And uh, lucky enough to have Brandon with me this afternoon. Brandon's been working really hard and hasn't done much fishing, so he was happy to jump on the boat. So I haven't been uh, live baiting in the boat in three months, but uh, it's a beautiful afternoon this afternoon, so <clears throat> it's about time I started my season again. So I'll get back into some uh, into some live baiting between now and uh, June next year. So fishing at the moment uh, has been really tough, like. We're in a kind of like a weird transitional period coming out of winter into spring and I've been fishing on the beach the last six to eight weeks. It's been pretty tough on the beach. Uh, there's plenty of small dew around, uh, but we haven't caught a big fish in about six to eight weeks. So I was on the beach last night and caught five undersized dew fish and about seven or eight really big supersized late season salmon. So it'll be interesting to see what happens uh, in the river um, this afternoon. But Brand and I are gonna fish the run in and the run out. Brandon's off tomorrow, so we'll give it a crack and see how we go. So right. here's a little tip for you, just in relation to um, yeah, your bait jigs. So what I do is, when I'm at home, yeah, I just um, run the line through and just tie a small loop knot uh, in the bottom, put it around the handle there. I've already got uh, my bait jigs uh, set up. I wrap them around some foam. I cut my bait jigs down from six down to four, so I'll cut one off here and I'll cut one up off the top. So I've got two down the bottom and uh, two up the top. Just tie it on with a uni knot. Like it just allows me to um, set my, my bait jigs up really easy, quick, because yeah, I've already got the, uh, the line through the rod, round the handle, the bait jigs are already done, cut down, ready to go, and um, yeah, I'm ready to rock and uh, go bait fishing. So, a uh, little bit of preparation at home, but mate, before you know it, you're not worrying about ripping them off cardboard, you're not worrying about them getting tangled up, you know, you've got to put your uh, you know, line through your rod, and uh, I usually like to tuck in out of the wind and out of the swell when I rig up my bait jigs. It's just another house that you don't need. A little tip for you. Way to get them, Brandon. One rod, then <laughs> another rod drifted. Yeah, bro. Nice chair, that one, Brandon. Comfy, yeah. Comfy, yeah. That's a comfy chair. Yeah, so Brandon and I, like, um, there was no bait on there to stop the breakwater, and very little bait out on the wreck. So what we did was we immediately came south out of that clean oceanic water, and uh, yeah, we like immediately just loaded our bait tank. So there's uh, bait out here everywhere. Bait all over the sounder, you know, like so. Uh, yeah. All right, man. Here's a cool experimental rig. Inspired by a cat fisherman from America. So what I've got, I've got a popper, taking it off. She's got a rattle in it. Going to keep the bait off the bottom a bit, give it double profile. <laughs> Let's see what happens. <clears throat> well, it's a uh, super, super slow night like uh, Jew fishing tonight. Brandon and I fished the uh, complete run in tide and uh, we've had no joy. We didn't even lose a bait. Uh, none of our baits have been you know, brimmed, attacked by brim, killed like that, not even any stingrays, no eels, so uh, really, really dead uh, tonight. We had a little bit of a, um, a drift around with a different technique on the turn of the tide there, but I might have left it a little bit uh, too late for that because by the time we got drifting and 
re-rigged, the tide had already turned and was running, so next time I'll do that a little bit earlier, but um, it's probably got potential. Like, um, so we're just uh, re-anchored and uh, redeployed four live baits, and uh, we're just going to um, fish until we get sick of it on the run-out tide and uh, pull the pin, and um, hopefully if we, we're patient enough and we persevere enough, hopefully Brandon and I will uh, we'll get a G-fish. Uh, I'll be happy if we just get one good fish tonight. Like, that'll do me. It's the way it goes, Jew, and sometimes, you know, like, um, yeah, it's uh, only just, you know, like, really, really early spring, so uh, at the moment, you know, she's pretty dead, and um, I'm not sure whether there's any association with the bait out in the breakwater, but uh, on the stock of the breakwater, uh, a few blokes were complaining that it was absolutely just uh, dead out there on the breakwater for bait, so we got our bait further south off the back of Big Ben, so let's keep an eye on that with this connection between no bait in the river, no bait in the breakwater, and um, you know, pretty quiet dew in the river, but anyway, fingers crossed, Rand and I, hang in there and see if we can uh, sting a fish or two on the run out. Get back to you. Well, when you're dew fishing, you've got to be patient, you've got to persevere. Brandon and I have done a lot of that tonight. So, what we're thinking is, we're only going to fish till like 12.30. So we've got about 35 minutes to uh, to make an episode. Because if we don't get a fish, it's certainly not going to be an episode. Put a hurt on him then, okay. Yeah, let me grab that. Let me take that. Oh, Brandon. That's the fish we've been looking for. What time is it? 1226. 1226. <laughs> we had four minutes to go. I'm not sure whether I have a rod. He was working. Put a lot of hurt on that fish initially. Mate, when that, I hit that fish, mate, he went straight. Like for the structure. <laughs> I saw the rod going behind you. I had to put a uh, fair bit of hurt on him, eh, initially. Mm -hmm. I think that's a shovel nose shark. I hope not. If it is, <laughs> that is the cheapest for sure. Just relax with him. It's amazing um, when the tide's running really, really, really hard, that they really get down to that tide. Mm -hmm. I saw those head shakes. Just need to relax with this fish a bit. Yeah, I kind of want to move the chair out of the way. Bad of fish, bro. No, it looks like it's a good one. Down very deep. What he actually should be talking about is the bludge. He shouldn't be talking about the training. The training is not the bludge. 
Yeah, and that's that's the problem. That's who's picked the wrong targets. But uh, uh, Vice Captain, yes. you you have told us a million times. You don't want to rush these fish, uh, eh? The no, we have been fishing super hard, hard on two tides, young, and um, Aussie worker, a young kid with a work yeah, when you hit a fish, you just don't yeah, want to. It is it is hard to get. Rushing. I think we're around another line. That's why there's so much weight. Take the. Uh, I think he's around two lines actually. Yeah, you take that. Is this neck going to be enough? Yeah, it's enough. Are you sure? I'll just bring you forward. <sighs> got him, mate, got him. Don't tell me that. Oh, it is too, Brandon. There's two. Did your mouth see it? Shitting Brandon? <sighs> That's the fish we've been looking for, bro. And you are not going to believe it, Brandon. Look. It is on. <laughs> the experimental rig. Hallelujah. Circle look right in the corner of the mouth. Unbelievable, Brandon. I just want to shout out to Catfish Dave, all the way from the United States, who inspired me. Yes, <laughs> rattle off. I've got to send you a photograph, Dave, and some video. Good on you, bro. Yeah, you're bang on. Bang on. Oh, 120. Yes. <laughs> yeah, baby. That's a PB for me. It's on the spot that we're fishing. Like uh, 120. Like uh, epic fish. And I reckon. Yeah, like. Uh, let's get this. Uh, we think. Under the light. Got him? Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Spear him in. Ready? Here we go, bro. All the way down. Yes. Hell yeah, man. God yeah. All right. That's a wrap for Brandon and I tonight. Man. We have worked so hard to try to catch a fish tonight. We've fished the front end, no joy. Like we've been sitting here for about, I don't know, two and a half, three hours fishing on the run out. I said to Brandon, that's it, mate. I'm not fishing till after like uh, 12.30, you know, like I'm going home. Made it about 12.26. I think all we'd caught before that was two like shovel nose sharks. And then uh, we decided to fish the, uh, the run out. And I said to Brandon, mate, I'm not fishing till after 12.30. And uh, you would not believe it, at like 12.26, Brandon's sitting up in the chair and he said, whoa, 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 that back rod. Turn around, grab that rod, and mate, that fish just powered off for the, uh, for the structure. And mate, I actually locked the drag up once, I locked the drag up twice, I actually locked the drag up three times to try to stop him. And eventually, uh, yeah, I stopped that fish and he turned around, but mate, he went that hard left, he went through the other rods and tangled up the other rods, and I just fought him straight through those other rods. And uh, you would not believe it, I'm so stoked. Like, what I've been doing is I've been watching um, a guy in America called Catfish Dave, and he does, uh, he's an awesome cat fisherman. But what they do in America is they, uh, they love to have like a, uh, like a float and a rattle down near their circle hook. And it's awesome because I reckon the, the catfish love the rattle and the lure. So I thought, yeah, man, I'm going to give that a go. So uh, I guess it does three things, really. What it does is it holds the, uh, the bait up a little bit higher in the water column. Um, it makes it almost look like there's two baits, like, swimming out there. And when you've got a big live bait on it, it kicks and it, like, it rattles. So, um, yeah, it was funny how it was really tough fishing, but that's the, uh, the rod that went off. So 
<coughs> in the location I'm fishing, um, that's a PB for me, that's a, that's a metre 20, so that's a really nice fish. A metre 20 is a fish up around about maybe 40 pound, and um, yeah, he was a really big, uh, healthy fish, and um, managed to get him in and pretty quick, and I just actually speared him in, and he hit the water and saw his tail beat, and he actually went down, so uh, man, I'm just so stoked, you know. So the idea with dew fishing is just, be patient, persevere, hang in there, and if you're lucky like Brandon and I, um, you know, you can uh, be rewarded. So uh, yeah, I'm stoked that I got that fish. It's great to be out fishing with Brandon <clears throat> um, again. You know, like um, it's just a shame that Brandon didn't get a fish tonight. We only got uh, one fish, but um, yeah, awesome. So just remember if, um, you know, like you like the uh, content that I create, make sure you like the video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, pass it on to your mates. If you like, send me a comment. I uh, always get back to, uh, to most blokes. So um, anyway, this is David Brandon signing off on another episode. Always remember, let's get some.